Hey guys, I'm back. Sorry, I've been out of commission for a couple weeks. I got a case of the flu and man, it crushed me. Um, yeah, as you can tell, my voice is pretty haggard, but we'll soldier through this one because I know you guys have been waiting for the third part of how protein works. And today, we're going to talk about protein degradation. So, we've talked about protein synthesis, how you build protein in the body, how you build, you know, in the case of skeletal muscle, protein synthesis in muscle, building skeletal muscle. What we haven't talked about is the other side of the equation, which is the output, it was this degradation. So just like caloric balance of input versus output, we have protein balance of synthesis minus degradation. If synthesis exceeds degradation, we are in a net positive balance. If degradation exceeds synthesis, we're in a net negative balance. <clears throat> and skeletal muscle, obviously to build muscle, we want a net positive balance. So obviously we want protein synthesis as high as possible and degradation as low as possible, right? Not so simple. Um, protein degradation is actually a very, very important part of overall health. Uh, in fact, you intermittent fasters who go on about autophagy, what about autophagy? What about autophagy? Well, autophagy is protein degradation. It's lysosomal protein degradation. So, you know, people who are saying intermittent fasting is anabolic, again, but then you're also talking about how great autophagy is. You realize that that is actually, there's, there's a disconnect there because that's catabolic, which is fine. There are some advantages to that. By the way, you get the advantages of autophagy just by caloric deficit, just saying. Um, a large part of being healthy is making sure that this system functions optimally. Um, a lot of disease states occur or are contributed to by improper protein degradation. Why is that? Well, a lot of the system is responsible for uh, degrading misfolded or old proteins that have become uh, less functional and can actually cause damage to the body. Um, in fact, like mad cow disease is a long story, but essentially it's a protein that's not properly degraded by our own system. It's uh, not, not folded into it, what we call its lowest conformational energy structure. Uh, in the case of cancer, as we're going to talk about in a minute, a lot of cancers have dysfunction of the protein degradation system. The systems either degrade proteins that are involved in cell death and that's what causes cancer cells to become, you know, basically immortal, immortalized. Um, or you have a lack of degradations of, of misfolded or cancer promoting proteins. So this process is actually part of a very healthy system. However, too much degradation is bad. Too little degradation is bad. Say it again, too much degradation is bad, too little degradation is bad. When we talk about protein degradation, what does that encompass? Well, it boils down to essentially lysosomal or non-lysosomal protein degradation. A lysosome is an, or is an organelle of a cell that is kind of like the trash compactor, right? It just, it's, it's non-specific. So it just goes through and chops up a lot of proteins, okay? It's getting rid of a lot of proteins. It's causing a lot of turnover. Now, during starvation, it actually does become more specific. But for the most part, it's non-specific. We don't really need to say much more about that. That is where you get the term like autophagy. That's a big part of autophagy. So autophagy is basically um, engulfing other cellular components. Non-lysosomal is a specific process 
for protein degradation. It's targeting specific proteins. We have what's called the caspase system. Uh, the caspase system is a um, basically enzymes, enzymes that are in the caspase system, um, they have a cysteine residue. So cysteine is an amino acid that sits in the active site and attacks uh, proteins that have specific amino acid sequences. In fact, it almost typically cleaves always after an aspartic acid. So this is specific, again, targeting specific proteins. We also have what's called a calpain system. Calpain system is a calcium activated um, system of enzymes that also degrade proteins. These do not degrade by amino acid sequence, rather they are recognizing particular um, structural characteristics of the protein, certain shape, structure, functionality, and they're degrading those proteins, okay? My guess, and I don't know this for sure, but certain misfolded or incorrect proteins have certain characteristics to them that this and this probably recognize and chew them up, get rid of them. In fact, protein degradation is so powerful that even during protein synthesis, seven out of every eight amino acids that's used for the synthesis of a new protein, seven out of eight come from a previous degraded protein, okay? So seven out of eight are actually recycled. So this is a very important process, even because it ties back together with protein synthesis. That's why even though it is synthesis minus degradation, it's not quite that simple. You can't have uh, remodeling and rebuilding of skeletal muscle without degradation. You need some degradation because you have to make the protein stronger, better, newer. That's why this process is still important. You wouldn't want no protein degradation. And then we have what's called the, the ubiquitin proteasome system, which is actually really cool. I studied this a lot in uh, undergrad. I actually did some research on it. So the proteasome is this big barrel-like complex of multiple catalytic sites that degrade proteins. And I believe you have, I could be wrong, but I believe they call this the 20S proteasome. And then there's a cap. This cap is the 19S proteasome. And when you put them together, I believe the whole thing is called the, the 26S, I believe. You guys don't need that information, but. So this thing has active sites all over it where it, uh, these catalytic sites attack proteins, cleave them, chew them up, get rid of them. It's a very specific process. And the reason is it only degrades proteins that are tagged with a protein called ubiquitin. So you have these proteins with a tag on them. I'm, protein's not drawn to shape, size, or scale. And they can even be polyubiquitinated. Okay, so you have these little tags. And these tags tell this guy, get them. Okay? So ubiquitin is going through and, and being tagged on different proteins that need to be degraded. This is a very major um, degradatory process in skeletal muscle. And it seems to be if not the rate limiting process, then probably the most important degradatory process of skeletal muscle. Cal pain seems to be important as well. This seems to be the most important. Now, during uh, disease states like cancer, where you have massive muscle wasting, or um, uh, HIV, or uh, severe caloric restriction, no, so caloric restriction does not have the same massive impact, but it does raise degradation, okay? So this, these systems, the calpanes, the proteasome, the caspases, they can become too active, okay? 
So how can we combat that? Well, a diet higher in protein, higher in leucine, and HMB has also been shown to inhibit some of these processes. So if you have cancer, and again, I'm not making a diagnosis or a medical suggestion, this is just what the research says. If you have cancer, you have uh, sepsis, you have um, HIV, or you're severely calorically restricted, at, you know, a higher protein diet, adding in supplemental leucine, adding in HMB, and even fish oil has been shown to uh, inhibit these processes. Those could have a benefit towards lowering degradation back down to a more normal level. Again, too much degradation is bad, too little is bad. We want a normal amount. That's what we want, okay? The regulation of building muscle is usually through synthesis. We're probably want to go away keep degradation pretty normal, okay? We don't want to impede it beyond what is normal. But again, if you're in a very, very restrictive contest prep diet or you're very, very low calorie, then maybe something like HMB or leucine supplementation with a high protein diet may make sense, okay? Or even high dose fish oil depending. So, um, interestingly, again, showing kind of how cancer operates. Um, during cancer, the proteasome is actually overactive and is overactively tagging and degrading uh, um, what are called apoptotic proteins. Uh, apoptotic proteins that are for, it's called for the process of apoptosis. Uh, that is programmed cell death. So these proteins hook up to cells, these apoptotic proteins hook up to cells and tell them to die. They program that cell death, okay? But during cancer, these proteins are being degraded too rapidly. And so these cells that are supposed to die don't die. So that's how these cancer cells accumulate. Well, that's one of the ways that they accumulate and stay around so long and become very resistant to treatment and very immortal. Uh, my mother has multiple myeloma and one of the treatments they use for her is actually a proteasome inhibitor. So it's actually inhibiting some of the active sites of this proteasome to prevent it from degrading these apoptotic proteins. And that's one of the major treatments for a lot of cancers out there. So that's been a short um, kind of tutorial on protein degradation. Again, too much degradation is bad, too little degradation is bad. And we have lysosomal, non-lysosomal, non-specific and specific. Hopefully you guys are gonna become protein degradation experts after this, but you're gonna understand a little bit more when we say protein breakdown, protein degradation, exactly what that entails and how it works. Thanks for tuning in guys. Uh, stay tuned for the fourth episode where I'm going to give more practical recommendations about protein intake.